Welcome to Insight, a concise comment on current issues from the Jubilee Center. Uh, this evening we're speaking to Sir John Horton, um, who is joining us for our winter conference here in Cambridge. Sir John, thank you for joining us. Thank you um, for inviting me. Uh, pleasure. I wonder, Sir John, if you would kindly tell us to what extent, given your experience uh, and expertise in the field, is the science settled uh, regarding human-caused global warming? Well, science, of course, is never actually settled mm. because it's not in the nature of science to be completely settled, particularly in its detail. Yes. But there is no reasonable doubt at all that the, some of the changes in climate we've seen recently, the warmth over the last 30, 40 years, the increase in temperature, the increase in water vapour in the atmosphere, the increase in rainfall in places, the, some of the storms and the problems, and the beginning of sea level rise, all those things, there is very little doubt in that most of that mm. is due to the fact that humans are burning coal and oil and gas, pushing out emissions of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, it acts as a blanket over the Earth's surface, um, the physics of that is well known. It's been known for 200 years or more yes. that, in fact, that we are kept warm by the greenhouse effect. Yes. The, we increase the amount of greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas, like carbon dioxide, yes. then the earth will be warmer and the climate will change. Yes. So there is very little doubt about that, about that at all. Yes. Well, there is some doubt, of course, is just what the detail of the change will be, just yes. how big it will be in certain places, yes. how fast the ice will melt, yes. and a whole lot of, a whole lot of things. Yes. But the basic facts yes. are not, not really in dispute at all. And therefore, the moral imperative for action is unequivocal. The, in, the, the, the science is unequivocal. Yes. And the imperative is there, is unequivocal to, to, uh, unequivocal to. Yes. And we really have to take action, and we have to take it as fast as we can. Yes. May I ask a, a slightly personal question? You've been offering leadership in this area, both within and without the Christian community, for decades now. Yeah. Why? What, mo what has motivated you to pursue this uh, and offer the leadership that you have? Well, first of all, I'm a scientist, and I, uh, I've mm. been a scientist all my life, and I've got very interested in the science of this problem. Mm. Um, because I got involved with, uh, with two great technical breakthroughs, actually, and I studied the atmosphere, the fact that we observed the Earth from space, yeah. and also that we had computers to deal with the data and to model the climate on computers and to yes. try to understand how it was happening. So my first driver was a scientific driver, yes. very definitely. Um, but then, um, you know, during the 80s, it became, we begin to, began to realise that it was going to change the climate substantially and some of that change might be adverse and might cause real problems to humans. Mm. And now, of course, we know that the problems for the poor of the world mm. will be much greater than the problems for the rich. Yes, yes. And droughts and floods and the problems of sea level rise um, will mean that many tens, hundreds of millions of people will get displaced from some of the world's poorest countries. And that's really terrible. So, there began to be then a Christian driver, yes. a driver to say, well, the world really needs to take notice of this and we have to do something about it. Yes. And the onus on us in the rich world mm. is to use our wealth and our skills, mm. the wealth which we've got from burning fossil fuels to create our industries. Mm. That wealth has come to us and we've got to you begin to use that mm. to really help the poorest in the world to to get out or, or, or to adapt to the problem yes. and to get sustainable energy and begin to develop a sustainable lifestyle of their own. Yes. So the challenge is enormous and it's yes. a Christian challenge, yes, it is. tremendous Christian challenge. There's an awful lot in the Bible about yeah. caring for the earth and caring for the poor. Are you optimistic about the Christian response at the present time or do you think there's a long way to go? We have a long way to go yeah. and Christians have been a bit slow to pick it up. Yes. Uh, for a whole lot of, a lot of reasons, yes. but uh, it is being picked up now in a serious yes. way. Yes. And Christians are beginning to take it seriously and beginning to act. Yes. And groups of Christians, I've had a certain amount to do with yes. evangelicals from the United States yes. and seeing them begin to move yes, exactly. in a very serious way. And that's yes. been very encouraging because if, if any country needs to move, it's the United States. 
Sir John Horton, thank you very much. Thank you.